Hello and welcome back to our channel. Um, I came up the mountain here today. It's kind of been yucky weather for, I don't know, maybe a week. We've had an ice storm and snow and ice and snow. and It's just kind of nice to be out today. It's warming up a little bit and the snow has melted some. So I have a little bit better footing coming up the mountain here. I have my camera perched on a log there, so if it's not exactly level, you'll have to forgive me. But I came up here for a very specific reason today, and that, well, I guess there's two reasons. One, just to enjoy the peace and quiet up here. Um, there's no place like in nature that I can commune with God and just be at peace. So if you don't have peace, I invite you to go out into nature and, and really reconnect with the Creator. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is something that I recently posted on social media and uh, on Facebook and I had a lot of response from it and it's about this lichen that's on this stick here and I can let you see it more closely. And if you notice, I want to point out these little round things on this lichen. We'll talk about that. Well, what is this? If you follow me on social media, you already know. <laughs> but I wanted to give a little bit more information because there was such a tremendous response and uh, very good responses. And so I wanted to, wanted to talk about this a little bit more. This right here is a very powerful medicine. It's actually considered edible too, but I don't recommend it. Um, I mean, if it was a life and death situation maybe, but you'd have to leach it, boil it, change, you know, in changes of water because, you know, there are some things in there that could really upset your stomach. Um, but its, it's uh, main use is that of medicine. This is called Usnea lichen. Uh, lichens are a combination, or they're, they're kind of a result of the combination and of a, uh, an algae and a fungus together. And then you have this lichen that is produced as the fruiting body. What these little discs are on here, this particular um, batch of usnea is entering its reproductive phase. These are called apothecium or apothecia, and it's the fertile surface. These little discs or where the spores will come from. Now, this can can reproduce by spores and by, you know, pieces going, you know, different places and stuff. But when it's reproducing by spores, it this is where the spores come from. These little discs called apothecium. Um, there are several lichens that look very similar to usnea, and there are literally dozens of different species of usnea. So, if yours on the west coast doesn't look like ours here on the east coast, it doesn't mean it's not Usnea. The key identifying feature of Usnea, and I'm just going to pluck this bunch off, and, uh, and I'll come a little closer to the camera and let you see this, and you can kind of feel it too. It's a, it's a little rubbery, but when you pull it apart, it's got like a white string in it. I don't know if you're seeing it yet, but I'm seeing it and I'm feeling it. It's kind of rubbery. Can you see it's kind of got that springy texture to it? And I don't, I'm not sure how well it's showing up on the camera, but at any rate, um, it's my best attempt to show you what it looks like. Usnea is nicknamed lungs of the woods because it's very sensitive to air pollution. So the fact that we have it in such an abundance here in the eastern Kentucky mountains is a good indicator of the quality of the air in this region. And that's a blessing. Uh, it grows very slowly, so you don't want to over harvest this. Just harvest what you need. It can be dried for later use. You can make tinctures out of it. You can just put some in and boil it down in water and, uh, and make a tea. You can make a throat spray. It's very good for strep throat. You can spray it on the strep throat. Research has shown usnea to be antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. Now, if I was out here in the woods and I fell and cut myself, I could take this usnea and pack it directly in the wound because it has properties that help with blood clotting. And it also would help the wound not to become infected. Usnea, I make a salve called boo-boo balm 
and usnea is one of the three herbal ingredients in that. Um, I put usnea, yarrow, and, and comfrey. I'm going to do a video on that soon to show how to make the boo-boo balm because so many people have have been interested in it and I, I can't keep up. I would rather teach you how to make it than you depend on me. And so, um, it as I said, it grows very slowly. So, you know, just harvest what you need. Now, most of the time when I find it, I find it in sticks just, you know, especially after a storm, you know, we've had the snow and the ice and everything. If you walk in the forest after a storm, that's a really good time to find it. And, you know, look for the algae and, and the, the usnea together. I rarely find it growing directly on the, the trunk of trees, but I have seen it. I've seen it on poplars. I've seen it even on, on pine trees, evergreens. Um, I really see it more on oak than anything else. It loves apple trees. Um, this is pretty much the trees that I have found it on myself. Now, a lot of times, and I'll put a picture of this, and actually here's one. I didn't see this when I picked this stick up. But you can see this, uh, this fungus here. It's, it's, uh, that's actual, actually called Exidia rhiza or, rhiza or amber jelly roll fungus. I often find usnea and this jelly roll fungus growing on the same stick. Now, I don't know if there's any kind of a symbiotic relationship. I've just noticed that I, I often see it you know, together growing on the same stick. Okay, and finally, what I'd like to mention is if you take the usnea internally, which you can, um, you can take it like as a tincture, or as I said, as a tea. It infuses readily into oil to make salves, like I mentioned in the boo-boo balm. But if you, uh, if you take this internally for any kind of UTI or candida infection or anything like that, you need to not take it for long periods of time. Don't take it for more than, you know, in high doses or whatever, for more than, say, a week or so at a time. Give yourself a break because it's very concentrated, very powerful medicine. Um, one other thing that you can do with it, ladies, if you, if you ever have issues with um, uh, a vaginal yeast infection, you can make a wash out of this and do a douche with it, and it will help to clear up um, any kind of yeast infection like that. Um, I believe that would work even for, for oral candidiasis, you know, thrush in the mouth. I don't know if I would use it on a baby or not, but um, it's very effective for those types of things. And as I mentioned, the throat spray for Mercy. If you're going to be, like if you're going to fly on an airplane or be around people that are sick, you can take that throat spray and, and I would just make a tea out of it, a decoction, and put it in a little spray bottle and just, you know, spray it in the back of my throat every so often or take it in, in my water bottle and drink it um, to kind of just help myself uh, if I'm going to be around sick people, somebody that has a cold or flu or something like that. So that's it. Um, as far as I can think of and, and anything else, if I remember it, I'll put it in the comment section below. So I hope that's been a benefit for you and go out and spend some time in nature, reconnect with God and learn all of the blessings that he's given us in nature that are free. It's free antibiotics. It's free wound care. You can use it as a wound wash, make a tea, use it to irrigate a wound infected with MRSA. It's amazing. I'll see you on the next video.